Hey everybody, so we're gonna end off 2020 and start 2021 fresh. Here are all the games that I beat in 2020. So I found this um, all over the community. The people have been doing this for years now, for at least three years I've seen, of games I've beaten and they use the hashtag just beat it. So I was like, why not join on this bandwagon? I had set a goal for myself, which I did meet, which is to beat half of my backlog for sure. And that was 30 games or more. And I did hit that finally. So I decided, you know what? Let's see what all the games I beat. Let's get some memories going and we'll go month to month. Now, starting off in January, we have the very first game, which is the game J Love got me for Christmas the year before that. I had just beaten River City Girls and I decided which one do I want to pick and I was like, you know what, let's continue with this Switch Marathon. And I beat Super Mario Odyssey. This was a good one. I like the retro with the modern mixed feel. It made me want to jump in and automatically start playing. I did beat it over three days. This was an, a little bit easier game to play, but it wasn't so easy to where it was just like, I breeze through it and I'm bored. I actually did have a little bit of difficulty on some parts, not the bosses, but just like in general finding things and figuring out what to do. Once I figured out the puzzles, it was a cinch. My favorite level was the city and the the Bowser levels in that was so good. I enjoyed that part. I hope that they make a Odyssey 2. We will see if they do for that one. Now moving on right along. The next game was a 3DS game, and that was Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Mega Force. I had this in my backlog, and I decided, you know what? I didn't play any of the Mega Force games that I have for my 3DS, and I decided to play it. Uh, it's a little repetitive on a lot of the voice acting, so if you can deal with the repetitive, like, same old, same old, like, I'm not kidding. I kind of got irritated with it. But once, you know, I finished it, I was enjoying, you know, that it's good and done, but don't expect some great acting from this. Expect a lot of, oh, over there. Oh, over there. Oh, over there. <laughs> so this was a fun game. I just wish that there was more to this and not so much hand-holding. Okay, next we have a DS game, and that is Hotel Dusk Room 215. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out the numbers, but yeah. So this one was a really fun game. I was surprised by this. I had picked this up randomly. Um, it was in one of the stores and I had seen it for a game hunting. I just snagged it up. I saw it. It intrigued me by the cover and the story is very vast. I thought this was going to be a point and click where you just run through it, blaze through it, and you're done. No, there is so much to do in this game, and I was surprised by the ending. I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who has not beat it, but I really enjoyed this game. I was loving the twists and the turns and figuring out who was, you know, it's kind of like Clue. Who was the person that's doing this? What's going on? Why am I here? And definitely a pickup if you do see this and it's not a bad price, definitely get this one for sure. So moving right along, the next game I beat in January is Ratchet and Clank. Now this one I was happy to get. I do love me some Ratchet and Clank. I was happy to hear that they were remastering it and that they were gonna put out a movie and stuff like that. So I haven't seen the movie yet, actually, to be honest. I can't find it, and I have to look for it for a little bit. But this one, nothing bad about it. I love the remaster. They didn't destroy and try to remake or do anything new mechanics. Same old mechanics, just better design in the little areas. Better, um, in my opinion, voice acting. I mean, I did love the original people, but this one, spot on. I loved that they didn't go and tinker with anything. So this one definitely, if you haven't picked it up, grab this one for sure. So the next one is a Crash game and it is Crash Mind Over Mutant. I did get the PAL version because this was cheaper and it was CBI, so I didn't have to worry about this. But this one's really glitchy. I don't know why. Uh, I played it 
I beat the game, but I struggled because every time I get somewhere, I had taken photos of this. I had literally shown like there'd be a point where I jump somewhere and I get into a little like wormhole and get sucked into the wall or sucked into like a little crevice area and then couldn't get out. So this happened to me multiple times, not just once. It was like a good handful of times where I got stuck. I couldn't get out. And if that wasn't the case, it would have been a brilliant game. <laughs> I mean, I got to the point where I was like lost and this is meant for a kid for seven and up. I, I don't think a seven-year-old could figure this out though, to be honest. So yeah, if, if they fixed a little bit of the glitches and the issues, I would definitely say yes, but don't pick it up for too expensive. Find this cheap if you can. And moving right along, I feel like it is a memorabilia time, uh, like a nostalgia time, and that is Jack and Daxter, the remaster from Limited Run. I had heard that they were going to remaster this. I had to snag this up right away. I love me some Jack and Daxter also. And for me, I same thing as Ratchet and Clank. They did not destroy it by doing new mechanics, new jumping, or anything like that. It's literally just a copy and paste, which I love. I know some people don't, but I loved that they just really did the good graphic design of all the levels, change everything, fix everything. So for me, this was a great like just to go back and finish it again was the best thing in the world. So I did love me some, you know, Jack and Daxter. So definitely if you can find it for a good price, don't don't spend triple the price for this. It's just the same game. So if you already have it on PS2, don't grab it again. And moving right along, the last game I played for January was Pangs Adventures. I heard that this was going to be made and I really do like some story-based adventure games and I saw this game and I was like, wow, I am intrigued. I did pick it up for, you know, base price. I didn't get it for cheaper or more expensive. And this one was difficult. I am not lying. I It took me several days of playthroughs to get through each level. I, by the skin of my teeth, figured out the last level and if I didn't figure out the last level I would have probably put this down and pick it up later and it probably would have stayed in my backlog but because of that I'm grateful that I finally beat it. It is difficult for some people so it's not meant for kids even though it's it looks like it's meant for kids it's it's one of those like you definitely need to practice a lot have patience with this game and then you'll be able to get it but for me I like Pain's Adventures. I enjoyed it. I like the storyline. That was one of my favorite parts of this game was the storyline for this one. So yeah, definitely try to pick it up if you can find it for a good price. So moving right along to February. This one is a bunch of PC games, but we will start off with Hidden Agenda is the first game that I played. This is the people that made Until Dawn. I was super intrigued to get a game that was story based driven again but with the twist to it this one you can either play with people as far as like on your cell phone or the controller or you can um you know just play against each other which is another like added bonus kind of like among us before among us i played this game not realizing that this is kind of like among us where you're playing as a team and then you have one person that is against you and this is the same thing where you can be competitive and one of you has the secret. One of you is a, a co-conspirator with the killer who wants to make sure that the story doesn't get where it needs to be for you, but for them. So I like this. I like that they had hidden agenda and it was not meant for everybody. Not everybody likes that you have to download an app for your phone, but it's definitely cheap. So I would pick it up just for the fun for the family or friends or whoever you can get over or um, just, you know, play by yourself until we can get everything going again. Now, moving right along, we have Beyond Two Souls. This is one of the PAL version that I got. I had gotten it before they released everything. And I love the story. I will not play and get every single ending for the Platinum. I just can't do that. That's just so much time. You literally have to play through it the whole way, the way you used meant to be. I played a couple times. Um... I played to where bad endings, good endings, so I got a couple of different ones, 
but I didn't want to play through, I think there was like 40 or more and I just don't have the time to do that. But for sure, definitely Beyond Two Souls is worth a pickup. And moving right along, we have, next is Yukon Trail. I'll show a picture of that because that was for the PC. Um, I played this on my emulator on the PC for DOSBox. I was wanting to find anything that was Oregon Trail or the people that made Oregon Trail. And I found out that they made Yukon Trail. And basically it's the same thing. Um, I will say I didn't like it as much because you're on a ship. You don't really do much until you actually get there. And if they had more than just, you know, you pick the, the where you're going to go. Like when you're with other people, you can set the pace, how much you want to do, everything like that. For this, it's literally just sail there and whatever happens, happens. I wish that there was something in between to get you to like figure out what to do next and then blaze through and get through the next part. Otherwise, it's just... Mm. So it wasn't the worst game I've ever played from them, but it wasn't the best game I've ever played from them. Next, I played the next game from, which is Heavy Rain. Uh, I had heard from J Love that this was a great game, and I was like, heck yeah, I'll try it out. I don't care, you know, if, if Beyond Two Souls was great, I was going to definitely try Heavy Rain. So I popped this in. I was so blown away by the story. It kept me in suspense the whole time, and I enjoyed figuring out how to get where I needed to go. I enjoyed the puzzles. It kind of reminded me of Saw before Saw the movie happened. It literally was a suspense thriller where somebody's kid is kidnapped and you are the father and you have to figure out what happened and where he is and get him out of where he is to save him. And you keep getting videos and footage and stuff like that. And you have to do things you don't want to do to get to where you need to go to get clues. And so you, if you don't get any of the clues, you don't know where he is at. You can literally have your son die, which is one of the endings, a bad ending. And I played it a couple times, just like Beyond Two Souls, where I figured out what can I do, you know, good ending and a bad ending. So I played it a couple times to see what would happen if this happened or that happened. But I didn't keep playing to get like the 30 plus endings. I just can't do that. So... But I really recommend this. This is for sure the game. I like this more than I like Beyond Two Souls. And I loved Beyond Two Souls. But this one topped the list for me. Next on the list is Oregon. The original. The very first Oregon Trail that was on the educational one. This one is also a PC emulator for DOSBox uh, Macintosh. But uh, I had to find it on a browser because none of the ROMs would work on my emulators that are on the PC. But... It was so cool to see the very first rudimentary programming for Oregon. And it wasn't even called Oregon Trail. It was called Oregon. And I was so in awe by everything and all the first, like, literally they said, once you perish, would you like to send a letter to your aunt? And if you don't, it says, well, your aunt is worried about you, but you're dead. So, like, what does it really matter? I found that funny at the very end. And I, it took me a couple tries, but I finally figured it out and I got to the very end of that one and I made it to Oregon, which I was so stoked about that one. The next one is oh, re the original Oregon Trail, the very first version for Apple II. This one I had to find on browser also, and I was shocked by how great it was to see it again and to play it and to be like... The original ones are the best to me. Like, you don't have to worry about carrying too much food. You just literally have to just worry about surviving. It is a little bit harsher on some stuff, but it's easier on some stuff. Like, you can set your pace and everything like that and not have to worry about it. But you also have a lot more chances of people perishing and not making it. A lot more dysentery, which I don't know why, but that's just how they program the game. And the last game on the list for this month is The Adventures of Lolo. This one I had seen E.C. Meyer Vids play and I really liked it. So I kind of put him his uh, you know stream on Lurk and then I went and later on picked it up and I tried playing it. The puzzles are really difficult, but once you figure out what you need to do, it's really rewarding and you get to move along. The story is really cute. I do like it. Um, I'm glad I actually got it to play it because I probably wouldn't have picked it up. It's one of those games where like it looked kind of iffy to me. And I don't know if I would have picked it up for the NES if I had to, but because it was free and I could stream it technically on my online service, 
I was like, well, hey, it's free. If I don't like it, I just put it away and it's not a game that I bought. But I do enjoy that kind of style of game. So I was like, hey, puzzle games are for me. And it was a win. I did love it. I did enjoy it. And I did love the ending. It was really cute to see the ending. So definitely try it if you do have a Nintendo Switch and you have it in your collection. Pick it up and try it. Now we are in March, so we're going to get through some a bunch of amazing games. We're going to start off with some classics and some ones that I didn't even know about, and this was in my backlog. Starting off was the collection. I did start with Flower. Flower was beautiful. The visuals were amazing. I was in awe that a game that's simple and simplistic was intriguing and made you think. It was thought provoking. You don't know what you are other than you're a flower and you go through the harsh world and trying to make it through and there's all these bad elements in the world but you strive through, you push through and the perseverance leads you to a beautiful ending. It was a great, it, from the beginning to the end, music, the visuals, the puzzles, everything made you think and I, I was really emotional throughout the whole time of just like figuring out what to do. Like, I was just like, first I was like happy. I was like sad. I was like, oh, scared. And you were panicky because you didn't want your petals to get burnt. And it was a great thing to experience. Then we moved on to Journey, the second game in the list. And this one was my favorite by far. This one, you're a little person and you're trying to figure out and you have a journey to go through. Hence the name Journey. And this one was a lot more in depth, a lot more, you know, beautifully done. I loved the music. This was my favorite soundtrack out of all three. And the, the, the little guy going through just was what I was so like, the visuals of him going through the sandy part, the desert, the creatures that were 10 times bigger than you. I was scared, but also like hoping to make it through. And this one, definitely try Journey. If you don't want to try the other two, this is the best one out of all of them for me, in my opinion, to go and try. So definitely pick it up if you can find it for a good price. I found this physical in PAL. And rounding it out, the last one was Flow. Now this one wasn't my favorite. I didn't like it as much as the other two, but I did like the visuals. It, it's basically you're like a little sea creature, an anemone. Yeah, I don't know, like toast the butt. <laughs> but it was a game that made me think and go through and go, what, what's going on? I did enjoy this one, but if I had to pick which one you should play, definitely Journey. But Flow is still a good one to play as far as like time consuming. It makes you think, it makes you want to figure out life about what's going on. You're a little creature, but it's just repetitive in my opinion. And you, and you can get kicked up and down and I was just like, hmm. Not really. The next game on the list is Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. So I did like this one. Uh, the only thing that I found weird about this game was the fact that they went from cutscenes of the cartoon to the animated stuff. So it kind of threw me off a little bit. If they didn't do the cutscenes as much, I mean, I, I might have actually got in depth with this game. I love the story. It's still classic in my opinion. I didn't care that they, you know, kind of messed it up a little bit. They looked a little weird, to be honest. But, you know, that is PS2 for you. I will say, um, I wish there was a little bit more story to it. That would be the only gripe I had, because once I kept playing, I really enjoyed it. But then in a few minutes, I was like, definitely, if you can find it in a good price, like I've, I've said before, pick this one up for sure. And the last game is The Last of Us. I had played this a long time ago and I decided, you know what, before Last of Us 2, let me play this again. Let me see what the story was about because I've forgotten a lot of it. And oh my gosh, to be thrown back into this story was amazing. I This is one of the best games ever made for the PS3. I didn't have a PS3 at the time, so when I played it, I played over my cousins. I watched him play it. and definitely happy that I got a copy of the remastered one so that I can play it anytime with my PS4. But the one thing I will say though is I wish they make it for PS5. That's the only thing I can say about that. Now we are in April and we are going to start the games that were good in my opinion. <laughs> and that is VeggieTales, Larry Boy, and The Bad Apple. This game 
I thought was going to be bad, being honest. I mean, I've played a lot of Christian-based games, and most of them really are just bad with the story, bad with the animation, but this was really fun. I really enjoyed this game. It was goofy and, and had little fun games, mini games that made you think, and in my opinion, definitely worth a try for anybody who has little kids. Um, it's super easy, so you won't have difficulty with them trying to figure out the, the little worlds, but I beat this in like no time, so it was one of those like, it's a one and done kind of day. You just play it one day and you're done. So, I mean, there might be parts where you're trying to, like, if you try 100% it, it might be a little bit longer, but not really. It's just, it's a day's worth of gameplay in that. And moving right along is another point and click game base, which is Broken Age. I love the game. I love the story. The only gripe I had was the puzzles. There was puzzles that I was just lost. And this was one of my only eight hour streams I ever did. Regretted it. <laughs> I thought I was at the end. I was like, I'll just keep playing. I'll power through it. And anybody who's in that stream, you know, you're just like, go to bed, Linda. And I was just like, I can't figure this puzzle out. I just gave up on it. It was one of those games where if I didn't have somebody helping me, I probably wouldn't have remembered. And even when they helped me, I was like, I'm so tired. I don't know what's going on. And people were like, oh my gosh, Linda. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it was definitely comical to anybody who's just sitting back and watching. But if the puzzles weren't there, I think I would love this more. But it's, it's still a fun game. Just uh, make sure you're prepared and take pictures of everything because... Even though it's a walkthrough and you can find it, not every single time you're going to have the same puzzle. Not every time you're going to have the same situation. So you might watch somebody's walkthrough and they have completely different puzzles. So don't even don't even use the walkthrough at all. Just, just take pictures of everything. That's all I got to say about that game. Next game was another point and click, which this one is weird. Death Synchronous City. Tomorrow Comes Today is just a weird game in general. The story is all over the place. It's a end of the world scenario story. I don't know what to make of this game. It's intriguing, grotesque, gro gory, but you can't look away from the screen because you're like, really, did that just happen? Kind of thing. And the puzzles are a little, you gotta, you gotta pay attention. You gotta have a walkthrough for the, some of them. But I really enjoyed the story. The twist at the end got me. I was just like, what? But the way they ended it, I just didn't like the ending. That was my only thing. If they had fixed the ending, I would have loved this game completely. It would have been a 10 out of 10 for me. But the ending just, just abruptly ended it. And nothing happened after that. And I was just like, really? You're going to end it like that? After all this great gameplay, after all this story, just poof, done. And then you just see the credits. You're like, <laughs> oh boy. That's all I got to say about that. Moving right along is a very short game, Crazy Frog Arcade Racer. This is, not even kidding, about two hours or less. I was playing it thinking, oh, I'm going to play the Arcade Racer, I'm going to have fun, I'm going to sit there, I'm going to play it. I was like expecting like Mario Kart where there's going to be a bunch of races. Literally, I think there was like four races, five races, and I was done. I'm not lying. Shortest game I've ever played, so this, by far this year. Don't, don't pick, don't play a lot. I, I don't know why. Just make sure you don't pay a lot of money for this game. Moving right along is a fun game. Uh, Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams Director's Cut. This was really fun. I love that you switch between sisters in order to get through puzzles and figure out different scenarios. I also love that they had different powers and you had to use both of them in order to get through most of the stuff. I loved the little Easter egg. There is an Easter egg in this game where you see the development team. If you find it, take a screenshot of it. It was amazing. I just happened upon it on accident. I got, I fall into a pit. I didn't even know where it was. And also I turn around and I'm like, what is that? Is that a picture of the development team? I even had it on stream, my reaction. You can go back and watch that. And it was, it was so cute to see the development team in the game throwing the little Easter egg. It wasn't like here plastered on every single wall. It was like, here it is. Just a little cute little Easter egg. And definitely worth a playthrough. Definitely pick this up. It's not bad a price right now. So you will have fun with this game. We are in May and the first game was a PSP game and that is Lemmings. 
This is a cute little puzzle game. It is definitely some parts were a little difficult for me to figure out, but once I figured it out, it was definitely worth the wait to watch all the little guys digging and tunneling through and doing their thing. And you had to time it right, otherwise you would just hear, ah, ah, ah. like it was just so cute. I forgot how cute Lemmings games were, but Lemmings is definitely worth a play. If you do have it at any point, pick it up for sure. <laughs> I must have been in a cute mood. Uh, the next one is Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Squeakle. I had this on my backlog. I didn't realize it was on my backlog. And I was like, eh, let's just try it. It is a rhythm game. You have to tap with a little um, DS pointer and figure out the rhythms. Uh, sometimes they'll switch the rhythm puzzle to a different style, but um, not worth the play if you do have to find it maybe for a kid. But I would definitely not. It's It was the movie and if you didn't like the movie which I didn't really like the movie I just played it because I was like bored but I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> next on the list is Until Dawn I played this again I had played this a while back and I wanted to play it all the way through again and see if I get a different scenario sadly my ending was not great but I did get a, car a couple characters that I had killed off the first time watched through you know like it's definitely a fun game. Definitely pick this up. It's stressful though. Make sure you put your controller down sometimes when it's like, cause it's very sensitive if you barely move and you will kill off your characters. That's all I gotta say. So just put your controller down for a minute. And the last one on the list was Rooms, the main building. This is the PAL version. Um, I saw this and this really intrigued me. I was on a hunt when I was in Europe and I saw this and said, you know what? I really do love puzzle games. Let me give it a go. Um, it is on the Wii. If you can't find it on the DS, it's definitely fun to play. Um, I'm not sure if the Wii is different, but this one had a lot of story. <laughs> the ending, I don't know what was up with the ending, but it was like, eh. I, I, I didn't care for the ending, but I, I liked it. The story got me really, it was intriguing, but another ending that was just like, huh? <laughs> so yeah. Definitely try it out for sure. Now, moving along, we are in June, and here is the games that I beat in June. So the first one is Hitman 2. I was super excited to hear that they were making another Hitman and had to snag this one up for sure. I had the complete first series. I always wait until they drop all the episodes and then just release it in one bundle because I don't like to play, have to stop, keep going, play, stop. It's just not for me. Hitman, I want to be immersed and keep going until the very end. The last boss, the last battle, was my favorite of the, the whole game. <laughs> if anybody has played this game, you know that the very end, the last scenario, is my favorite because the way that you can destroy them, the people, I'm trying not to give away the ending too much, but the way you can destroy them is comical. <laughs> and I did a dash right away. I just like, poof, ran out. I literally just took off and I was just like, Oh, next one. And then I was like, oh, that's the end. Oh, snap. <laughs> but that was hilarious. This definitely worth a pickup. You could slap people with a fish. That's all I got to say about that. I keep saying that, but it's so much fun. <laughs> Moving along, we have the next game on the list, and that is Man of Median. This is a three-part game series, and each one has something to tie into each other, I believe, but in a different way. You have a narrator who keeps talking throughout the whole time and he will be throughout the whole games of every single one. For me, this one, I loved the the gameplay. The ending, I was a little iffy. Um, some characters, I kept going, why is it that this person died? Like, do I have to do a different scenario or what? Because I thought, oh, I saved this kid. I played it twice and I beat it twice, but both times I played it, I was surprised that I couldn't save somebody. So I was like, is it just they just automatically die? And then I realized, well, maybe they have to do something. But it's just, it was a little weird to me. But I, you have to play this multiple times. I didn't realize that until I played my second playthrough because some things didn't make any sense. But once you play the second playthrough or third playthrough, then they make sense. And then you're like, oh, I get it now. I understand what's going on with this one. But it's definitely a good game. I like this one. And the next game on the list I liked, not many people like, 
and I understand why. I didn't like some of the ending. It was a little sad to me. I wish there was a choice, and that is Last of Us 2. I enjoyed the game. I will say, though, it is a one-and-done play for me. I will not play this again. It's just too emotional a draining kind of situation. I just could not get through more than one playthrough. And also, the PS4 Slim, I don't know what happened, but the frames dropped every boss. Like, the main boss, the, the, the Rat King boss, I think that's what they called him, I couldn't get through. I, it took me so many playthroughs because the frame drops were so bad, and he was moving fast, and I was moving slow. And if that wasn't the case, I would have enjoyed that part more. But to have to keep running and not running is just so frustrating to me. In the very end, I wish they gave you a choice. I wish they gave you a choice on what you can and can't do. You get choices all the way up until the very end. You know, you get to do this, you get to do that, you could go here, you go there. But the very end, I wish that they let you choose something in order to keep it going. And we'll see what happens uh, as far as the, the third game. If they do make a third game, I have no idea. But I hope that they do follow a little bit more on the story and end it in a different way. But we'll see what happens on that one. I'm probably going to get a lot of comments on that one. The final game I beat for this month is The Club. Um, I had this in my backlog for a long time. I kept putting it to the side and I'm kind of sad that I did that. This game is really fun. It's uh, a bunch of mercenaries, hitman people come together and you could be one of them and you have to go and do battles, trials, and basically you go through and you try to kill as many people as you can and get the many points and do it as the fastest time. It was really fun. The concept sounded okay, but once you actually execute it and play it, it was just the best game to play, in my opinion, for, like, I enjoyed this game. I'm so glad that I actually played it this year and made myself play my backlog because I probably would have left this on my shelf again and it would have made it through another year and I would have just missed out on a great game. Now we are in July and the first game that I played in July was Detroit Become Human. This is a fun story. It is very intriguing to me. This was definitely a good game to play. Um, there's a lot of choices you can make <laughs> and so many scenarios to different things and so many endings and so many twists. And I kind of expected that when I played, you know, Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls that I was going to get a bunch of stuff, but they made this more in-depth and immersive that I would play this one more than once if I didn't have a lot of stuff to do. Like, I would have kept playing this. This might have actually been the only one that I might have, might have gotten all the endings if I could but it's definitely a remembering everything kind of thing where I, I remember every scenario everything and it's still in my brain I still process everything to this day so definitely try this game out if you haven't next one is Barney hide and seek this one I found on my retro pie and I played it for the first time I was shocked by that it was actually kind of cute little platformer Definitely worth a try for me. Um, I I had it in my backlog. It's actually a game that I have on my collection, but I couldn't um, get my system to work correctly for my TV. Um, I don't have a three prong anymore for then I have to get an HDMI now for uh, the new Retro Trio. But I I had it in my Retro Pie, so I tried it out for that, so my backlog would be. Done. And since my retro pie was on, I tried the next game, which is Dungeons & Dragons Shadow Over Mysteria. This is a really fun game. I never played it in the arcade, and I saw it on my list of like games to play in the arcade. I was like, heck yeah, I'll try it out. I loved every single scenario. If you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan, definitely pick it up and try it. Um, if you can't find a ROM, I know there's plenty of people that are making a copy of it somewhere for somebody to play. So it is a coin guzzler, but you're not playing with real money anymore. You just hit a button on select. So definitely play it if it's not in the arcade, because if it's in the arcade, it's going to it's going to take all your money for sure. Next game on the list was Thomas <laughs> the Engine. Um, I don't know why I played the game. I just thought it would be hilariously cute to play. It's okay. It's not one of the best games I've played this year. It's one of those games where it's like a puzzle game. Um, 
it was okay. Um, I think maybe it's just very rudimentary for somebody to learn for a little kid. Uh, not a one to pick up and play, but I just like, I'll just try it. Cause it was like, I was bored and I was playing through all these games and that was the next game on the list that I saw. And I was like, Hey, maybe it's going to be worth the time, uh, for your kid maybe, but not for everybody else. Next on the list is Mercs. And I played this game on my RetroPie also, and I was in the arcade film movement after Thomas and decided, you know what, I'm going to try a shooter. I enjoyed it. I really loved this game. It was a fun playthrough of a game that I probably wouldn't have played in the arcade because some of these games were very coin guzzler and I just didn't have the money. I was only given like a couple bucks each time I would go to the arcade, so it was fun to actually finally play it and play it all the way through. And the last game on the list was also in my retro pie, and that was Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the Game Boy. I had played this a long time ago. I had it in my collection a long time when I was probably in high school. I think this was when this game came out, or maybe a little earlier. And I never beat it. I never played through it. I never beat the game. But I was like, you know what? Let me just try it. Let me play through it. Um, The game was okay. It was not a, like, it's not good or bad. It was just a game that I played and I was like, hmm, okay. The ending was fun. I liked watching the ending. At least they gave you a good ending. I mean, out of all the gameplay, it was like, you just punch and kick and do all this stuff because it's Buffy. And then when you get to the end, you're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> I enjoyed the ending. Like I, and the one good thing I liked about the game, which I've forgotten, um, if you keep playing, they give you a password. So, because you can't save on a lot of the Game Boy games, but I, I forgot about that and I was like, oh, because when I beat a level, I was like, oh yeah, there's passwords. I forgot about that. But, you know, if you free, if you have to go a step away for a second, you can close the game and come back and put the password in and it'll be good. I don't know if it works for the emulator. I didn't want to test that out because I don't, some emulators don't work and some emulators do. So I just played it all the way through until the very end. Um, but yeah, if you do get the original copy, password system helps you out. And moving along to August, we have a very good game, which is a reboot of a classic game, and that is Tomb Raider. Um, I have the ultimate triple pack. Uh, the reason why is because I really love Sleeping Dogs, and at one time I sold it and I wanted to pick it back up, but I didn't want to keep buying it again and then changing my mind. So I got Tomb Raider triple pack with uh, Just Cause in there so if I wanted to play Just Cause 2 I can and I never tried Tomb Raider the reboot and this story is really good. I really enjoy the story. Um, definitely worth a playthrough if you haven't tried this before. I enjoyed the whole game. From beginning to end I was shocked and scared by certain things and the one good thing is it doesn't handhold you but it doesn't make you replay the whole scenario again. It, go it does give you checkpoints so that's one good thing I, I like about this game. And the last game I beat for August is Madden 16. I played through the whole season of Madden and I made myself an NFL champion. So definitely worth a, <laughs> a fun time to play. If you're, you're bored, you miss football. I was playing it because I missed football and I uh, played through it. I actually, I don't think I've ever really played through a full season of Madden on like a modern console. I usually just would play a couple games with friends and call it a day. So yeah, it was worth the time. September was my shortest month as far as games to play and beat. That was because the only game I beat for September was Animal Crossing New Horizons. I had gotten this game and didn't know anything about Animal Crossing. I immediately loved it. I was so grateful that I had this kind of game to play. It's a chill game. You don't really have to think much about it. You just go with the flow, build your own island, build your own house, get as many villagers as you want. Um, I played it through, beat it, got KK Slider, paid off my house. I was told by Do You Nerd, who I trust. They, they have legitimized my beating of the game because I was like, well, what other games can you play or beat? I'm like, well, what else can you do? And that's it. Literally, you pay off your house. You get KK Slider to your island and that's it. But I furthered it just to make sure and I did get a five star on my island. So 
Mm. I'm trying to get all of, of it. I'm trying to 100% it for sure on this one. So once I get all the fish and bugs and the art, the art is the worst part. If I can get the art, I will be done. But I keep getting red and he keeps giving me the same art. Yeah. So uh, undersea creatures, I need about four more fish, one more. And hopefully um, I can get, because uh, I gotten all of the fossils. So the bugs, the bugs are going to be a little bit harder because those are certain times and certain days. So we'll have to see what happens with that one. But yeah, this was the only game I beat for this month. And we are in October. So the first game I played was on my Switch and I beat this one and that is Super Mario Bros. 3. I enjoyed this game. I had a little bit of difficulty with uh, the D-pad that I was using, but I powered through it and I finally beat with a rock candy controller. It, I wish I had an original Nintendo controller, but I made do with what I got and I was very happy and pleased. It took me three days, but it was one of those games where once you beat it, it's so satisfying to see him getting destroyed and you finally get the princess after how many castles. <laughs> Next on the list is The House in the Woods and this one is on PC. Um, it's an indie game. It's definitely worth a grab and play. Um, I was shocked by how great this game was. I was all the twists and turns and everything like that. And once you get to the house, creepy as hell for sure. Definitely don't play with the kids. Don't play with the lights off. It's got a lot of like little edgy feel to it, but what they did have, they definitely made it worth your while to just go through and try it out. Next game is Don't Open Your Eyes. That was a creepy game. Having somebody sit by my bed and me drawing their face and telling me not to open my eyes only to have my eyes crushed. <laughs> I just, I just didn't know what to make of that game. That game just freaked me out on the PC. I, I will not play the game again, but it was definitely intriguing to me for sure. Next game on the list was Flipping Death for the PS4. I had this in my backlog. Um, when I saw this game, it was um, announced and I, I really was intrigued by the story. I was intrigued that you can possess people and you can flip your scenario and kind of like Gianna Sisters, you know, that's maybe why I, I liked it so much was it's kind of like Gianna Sisters where you flipped it and one side was the dead and flipped it and one side was the living. So I just, I laughed. There were some scenarios that I laughed when I got through that part of like the, the little rhyming part. And uh, many people will know this rhyming part if you play this game where the, the lovebirds are rhyming. Oh my gosh, I sang that song for a while. It was stuck in my head. But the ending was good. I love the ending. I love this game. It was an all-around great game. Definitely worth pickup. It's really cheap now um, on the PS4. I don't know about the Switch. But I would recommend anybody to try this game out for sure. Next game that I beat was a little indie game called Make Sure It's Closed. This one was a short, sweet, simple game. Um... Not really that hard, not really that difficult. You didn't do much, you didn't get anything to move or do anything like that, but still worth a game that if you had a few minutes, try it out. And the last game that I played for this month was Nightmare in the Dark for the Neo Geo. This is definitely a game that I was shocked by. I um, it took me a long time to play and beat um, for the simple fact that, how do I say it? It's one of those games where you can't really fight, you're uh, in you're a gravekeeper and you just have like little like f a fireball thing that you just flick at people but it was not bad at all like I really did enjoy it and it made me go okay like once I beat it I was like I'm never playing this game again but it was definitely worth a try to for anybody to try it out um it's a cute little game uh just some parts are really difficult and and the thing is, is I think if I had a controller a lot of people are saying if you had a controller, it probably would have been a lot easier. And that's true because um, everything was reverted. Um, my arrows were my right hand and my... Because my, I'm used to my left hand being my arrows for my directional. So maybe if I had reversed it, maybe I wouldn't have been so like lost in the dark with everything. And I probably would have had more fun with it. But I really enjoyed this game. And 
maybe I'll find it on the Neo Geo or I'll find it with a controller and be able to play it then. And we are moving along and we are in November and the first game that I beat in November was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the first one remaster. I enjoyed this game once I figured out how to play this game. Um, I'm so used to the original one where you didn't have no gravity, no issues, and you just played it and you were done. I didn't really get stat points. I really didn't do much. I just played it, jumped through and got everything. But you actually have to get the stat points in this version. Um, once I got the stat points, I actually could play it and play it the proper way. I played as uh, Leo Baker. Uh, I enjoyed playing as a, and one of the new skaters. Uh, that's one, another reason why I used to like Tony Hawk was you got all the skaters that you enjoyed watching. And he was one of the first to have a female skater on his game. So I, I always will cherish this soundtrack is amazing for the first game. And it just, I, I, used to, I was just watching and listening and playing it. And I really, really enjoyed this one for sure. Next game on the list for October is Little Hope. I really enjoyed the game up until the ending. This game is worth a playthrough. Um, there's multiple endings, so maybe if you got a different ending you would enjoy it better, but just what they did, I really didn't like it. I, I didn't like it when they did it with Buffy. I didn't like it when they- you, you'll understand if you play the game. Um, there's a twist ending, and I didn't like the twist at all. I enjoyed the game all the way through. Loved it very much. I even loved it more than Man of Median. But the ending just squashed it for me. If they didn't have this kind of ending, I would have been a 10 out of 10 for me on this game. But the little girl is creepy as hell. That's all I gotta say about that. The next game on the list that I beat was the second game from Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. I finished the second one after the first one because I was like, hey, you can't be one without the other. So played it all the way through, got through to the end, and again, great soundtrack, had fun. Once I figured out the first one, the second one was a breeze. Got through, did everything, took my time, enjoyed my, like, I loved the second one as much, like, maybe even more. Like, maybe just a little bit more because... There was more skaters, there was more scenarios, and there was more things to do, but definitely pick this up. It's A lot of people complained and said they were not going to pick it up, but you know what? Once you get the stat points, you'll be fine. It's going to be okay. The next game is an indie game that I did not know about or hear about. It was a sleeper for me, and that is Erica. Erica, I've never heard of before in my life. I did not know it was going to be out. I didn't even know it was out for a year or two before I finally played this game. I was intrigued by the story. Um, I was looking for different games to play. I love story-based games. I love butterfly effect, point and click. And I was just trying to find any game that was intriguing for October. And I searched indie October fun story-based game kind of thing and Erica popped up and I searched on the store and sure enough it was mad cheap and I was like hell yeah I'll pick it up I mean if I don't like it it's digital and it was mad it was like less than 10 bucks so 10 bucks or less I'll pick it up and for me I loved it so much that I platinumed this game I really enjoyed the story I wanted to see every scenario every situation I wanted to see all the ways you can meet all the girls, all the people that were in there. Um, different things, different, like, what happens if you did this? What happens if you did that? I was so intrigued by that. I love this game. I hope that they make a second one and or any other game from this company. Like, I never heard of them before, and now I want to find out what other games that they're making. I even looked up, and sure enough, there's a couple of games on the way, so... I will be for sure picking up any game and I hope they put this physical. I really want this a physical game for sure. The next game that I beat was Octodad, Dadliest Catch. <laughs> this game is hilarious. It cracks me up. It's one of those games that it's a chaotic mess and a, and a good chaotic mess. I There's some puzzles and I, I didn't get understand what was going on and it was so simple and easy I just was like are you kidding me I metal geared the crap out of this one puzzle I laughed hysterically I, I was underneath a box trying to walk through <laughs> and people were laughing at me I was like I played metal gear I I gotta metal gear this I gotta get this and the disguise was right next to the the 
thin and I don't know why I didn't see it, but definitely a fun game. It was, you know, from a small team. It's one of those like concepts that makes you laugh. You got to try this game. If you can find it, even if it's digital, try this game. It, it cracked me up. I enjoyed from beginning to end the whole time. And I loved the sweet ending. It was a very sweet ending for this one. You got to try this, please, for sure. And the last game that I beat was Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4. I had to think about that for a second because I've played so many seasons, so many chapters. And I maxed out the whole battle pass for this one for Fortnite. Um, there's a new one, but I don't like the story this much. But for this one, I really did enjoy the story. It was good. I... I usually pick up the Fortnite and see what the new story is. If it's a good story, I'll play it. If it's not, yeah, it's okay. I didn't spend any money, really. And for this one, I liked it so much that I maxed it out. I liked the Marvel characters. I liked the snow, the scenarios, everything. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I rarely max out anymore Fortnite, but this one I did. I, I wanted all the Marvel characters. I wanted all the skins, all the stuff that you could find. I found little extra little goodies here and there. And yeah, I missed the event. That was the only thing, but they need to stop making events in a weird time. That's all I got to say about Fortnite. And we are at our final month. This was a fun journey to go back and see every game that I beat. So the first game that I beat was Oregon Trail. Um, this one was the Macintosh version. I had to remember for a second, and I really did enjoy the Macintosh version. I actually found a clean ROM this time. I played it a couple times, and I couldn't get a clean ROM that wouldn't freeze. Uh, it usually freezed like the last fort right before the end, and I never could get it to work. So this time, I was happy to finally find a ROM. I played this a long time ago. Um, I played like every single version of Oregon Trail throughout its time, and. I had a blast with this one. <laughs> All I gotta say is ingeniouses. I don't know how you survived. <laughs> it was it was just a shock to me on that one for sure, but definitely something to remember. And the final game I beat for 2020 was a great game to end it off. I, I started with the Switch game and I finished with the Switch game and that is Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild. This took me a whole year to beat, first off. This is a game that I was trying to 100%, trying to get through all the map, trying to do everything. And I got stuck on the second Divine Beast slash trying to figure out where to go. And I put it down for a little bit. I stopped playing it in April um, around that time. I picked it back up around June and I started playing. I couldn't get through the Lizard Beast. I couldn't figure out how to get to Gargaron City. And uh, Gargaron City was just pu putting me burst into flames. So I stopped for a minute. I picked it back up in December because I was like, I really want to play Hyrule Warriors and I don't want to start one game and this one is not finished at all. So I made sure to uh, have this completed, but I couldn't figure it out. So I asked around and Ingeniuses helped me out again. And he gave me a little pointer here and there. And a couple of people gave me pointers. And I figured it out. I got through, figured out the elixir, and was on a roll. So I was like, you know what? Let me get to the last Divine Beast. And I kind of realized I just need to play, get the Divine Beast, and keep going. Because I don't want to get frustrated. And that was the reason why I kept putting this down. I didn't want to get frustrated. And if I were to get, keep getting frustrated, I probably wouldn't have played this game anymore. And I would have just thrown it away. And it's a great game. I love the story. And I've always enjoyed Legend of Zelda. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to play it. I'm going to keep going. And I powered through it. Um, and I just, you know what? I was like, this is the night. I got to keep going. So I hoarded. I, I spent a good hour hoarding, um, finding, you know, ambers, finding any precious jewels, medals, anything I could find that would give me the max amount of stuff. And I maxed out each arrow as much as I could. I got about 50 each because I needed to know what to do. And I will say the last boss, Calamity, um, Ganon is easier than I thought it was gonna be. But I guess because I already played through all of them, I already know what they were gonna do. So I got through um, and I each one took two tries. The first one, I couldn't figure out how to beat him 
Um, and then I finally got through and figured out that you just need to use the powers. Once I figured out that you need to use the powers, I was good. And then the second one, I couldn't figure out the horse very well and what to do. Once I figured out you needed to jump, I was like, I got this. I got it. And I did it. And the ending is very beautiful. I love the ending. I love the end battle. I love the ending. Um, I probably won't go back and get as much. I mean, I'll probably see the memories, but that's going to be in Hyrule Warriors. So I won't go through as much and do that. And definitely a great game to end. <laughs> 2020 for sure if i didn't end it with another game i probably wouldn't have been like oh my gosh so that's how you do it well that is every game if you made it all the way to the end thank you so much for watching i started with a switch game ended with a switch game and that's the best way i guess to end and begin a year i was really happy that i decided to do this um i'm probably gonna do it again next year i enjoyed it I loved keeping track and going through my backlog. It was a New Year's resolution that I'm actually happy that I finished because it kept me distracted for this year. And anybody who knows this year wasn't an easy one. So hope you all have a great rest of your day. If you want to do this, go ahead and do this. Um, if you remembered, if not, start and keep going for this year, for 2021. I hope you had fun remember Manessine, if you followed my channel this whole year, you have probably remembered a lot of these games that I played through in my channel. So thank you for checking with me and always being supportive of this channel. Let's start off great with the next year and I will be writing down every game. <laughs> I did. I kept track for sure. So if you're new, please subscribe and as always keep on gaming and I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you next video. Bye, everybody. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games.